This video goes out to all those members of the 22 MLS Facebook group. Guys, stick around. You're gonna like what you see this year. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV at my hometown Coldwater, Michigan store. And if I'm beaming a little bit brighter than usual, it's because I have an updated fresh copy of what the last two years I named my nerd preferred personal favorite couples camping model. This is the 22 MLS Cougar. And if money were no object and it was just me and the wife camping, this is the one I would choose and I wanna show you why. Now this year they've, they've <laughs> Cougars got the claws out. They are looking better than they've ever looked before with this sweet, almost like executive upgraded look. There's so much of this that, that looks and feels and reads like a high class fifth wheel all wrapped up into something that should work for a lot of tow package half tons out there. You always wanna investigate uh, towing safety on a per truck and trailer basis, of course but a lot of tow baggage half tons are gonna find this one just fine. This RV um, now has Goodyear Endurance radials. It's tankless water heaters, so you don't have to take any chilly willy cold showers or anything like that. This is zero to 110 degree rated travel trailer with allowances for full-time RVing. Both of those things are almost never found in the world of travel trailers, and Cougar does them every day as a matter of happenstance. Excellent hot cold climate package, uh, factory standard solar, uh, not to mention there's expanded solar options that you can also get with these. Uh, and, the, and the fact that it's a small RV that doesn't look and feel small. It, in, in fact, it feels quite the opposite with the vaulted ceiling and that front windshield and no blocking privacy wall, it just feels enormous but that is really one of its only hiccups. This RV has two points of consideration that I think a lot of people might have uh, issue with. It doesn't have a bedroom privacy wall, just a curtain, and you are doing a little bit of shadow puppet theater with that thing, but mostly as a couple's camper, I don't know that that's too much of a big deal, personal preference, of course. Um, and the bathroom is kind of next to the kitchen. Some people really, really dislike that. But things like that, showing you the good with the bad, that's the kind of stuff I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what this one is, some of the different options that you have, and again, I'm gonna try to dial myself in and reel myself in because I am pumped. I love this model. So we've already kind of had a little bit of an overview with this one with that little floor plan and flash flying by this thing really, really quickly. What I wanna do now is dive into some deeper details, but I wanna start by actually kind of putting you in the driver's seat. I'm gonna cop a squat over here at the theater seat and give you a look at what this thing looks like in the driver's seat. So if I pivot my way around here and plop my butt down, the TV's up a little high, but when you recline back like I did just now, suddenly it's like very natural, very organic. It, it faces you uh, pretty darn nicely. I don't think the TV's in a really bad spot, but I, there's been enough of these out there now. There's enough Cougar 22 MLS owners. If any of you are watching this or anyone with a similar floor plan, I'd love it if you chimed in and shared your opinion on how you feel the entertainment setup works here. Now we're looking at the booth dinette. There's also a table and chairs option. That is actually one of the things that I would personally prefer. I'm gonna rattle off a couple of the options in a few minutes here, and I would love it if you folks told me how you would like one of these built. One of the other things this one does very, very well is campsite window coverage. And notice the full window in the entry door does have that privacy shade. Now at the time of this filming, that's pulling from the top down. Where it is, Cougar is working with their supplier based on your input uh, almost exclusively off uh, these videos here that we've been putting together uh, to, to get that to pull from the bottom up. Currently, that shade comes pre-installed from the manufacturer, so that's not something Cougar has direct uh, say and control over. However, they're hearing you, and your input you can see being reflected in this RV already. I'll be surprised if they don't make that happen by the, uh, the end of the season. Now, we are carpetless. It does have a little bit of a step-up slide technically, but it's never where you're really walking. I don't think it's too much in the way, though when we get in the kitchen, someone might feel differently about that. Again, I always try to be fair and point out the good with the bad uh, where I can. Notice too, that's um, it's about a half no knee knocker. You know, if you're sitting on the outside edge of the bench there, you're not gonna be cracking your kneecaps on that uh, easy up down dream dinette system. And especially when those bedroom mirrors get in play, it just looks like there's just windows all over the place on this one. And I really like, even though it's kind of a tall, thin window, they still put a forward viewing and breeze window over there in the slide side area. Now, uh, working our way up top here, you can see this is a barreled vaulted roof. 
And uh, this also has a little bit different air conditioning system. Cougar and Keystone call it their Blade Pier air system. Uh, Montana has the same thing. So first of all, that is a larger 15,000 BTU air, but then you have these little, uh, you know, swirly vortex style air vents. And what those do is they pull the air out of the, the ducting more quickly and they use a few more of them per square foot in this camper. And what the end result is right there is getting more air down in the cabin more quickly so it's not fighting the hot sun beating on the roof and with less noise. And it has a residential air filtration system, which is very cool. And again, sharing you some good with the bad. When you look over here, yeah, it's fairly walk around a bowl. Over on this side, though, because of where they have things like the water heater standardized, because there's not really other good spots for it on this floor plan, there's not a lot of walk-around room on that side of the RV. It's one of the very few hiccups uh, up here. Now, we are looking at a 70 by 80 king bed. Cougar does not have a queen option, but one of the things that it does have uh, is the ability to basically trim the bed base so that you effectively result in a queen bed now you may have noticed how it does have some privacy curtains right there they are a little bit sheer um if uh you're going to have some guests or anything like that they can still kind of see through it i think the idea with that curtain is because this is an open bedroom concept some people just don't like to be open into the room when they're sleeping um i've always kind of wondered how does it feel differently being in an open air couples camper like this versus like a hotel room where basically it's just a bed in a big open room. Um, it, it does, as I say it out loud, it feels kind of different, but I don't know why I feel that way. And I would love some input from you folks. By the way, right here by the door, um, you have motion sense lighting so that uh, the light will kick on when you come home. If you want it to, you can always turn that thing off. Um, but that way you don't end up with a big old cloud of gnats by the door. Now we're gonna take a step back in just a second, but new tankless on-demand water heater. And this is one of the generations where you can literally just set the temperature that you want on this. And you can mix the hot and cold water to kind of fine tune that. Very similar to like a residential setup. Standard in-command system here. One of the nice things here is you've got a light switch for your lights right there, but you've also got a physical light switch for your, um, uh, like your bedroom area lights or your, your uh, like if you're all the way back in the kitchen, there is actually just a physical light switch there um, as well. So, you know, you don't have to go tracking around, traipsing around the entire RV or busting out your phone. Um, even if you don't go Bluetooth digital with this thing, you can still just use it, you know, like a, uh, a more traditional switch panel effectively. Now I mentioned you have a table and chairs option and I do have, uh, it's a slightly outdated, but I do have a video of a Cougar 22 MLS with, uh, the table and chairs option. I actually really kind of liked it once I saw it, but one of the things I really like about the, uh, the dinette here is the fact that you've got that clutter cutting shoe garage right there by the door. Now the dinette does give you the ability to have a more obvious dedicated sleeper. The table and chairs, you can always uh, like put a uh, air bed under it because it is also no knee knocker. Notice how that big 4K TV can pivot around for easy viewing so you don't have to be just at the theater seat. But then as we start diving into all this storage, uh, this is where I think this war plan is actually very impressive. It does a very good job of packing a lot of kitchen storage capacity into a relatively small space. Now, we are looking at the 12-volt DC compressor fridge here. Um, there is a gas electric two-way option. The 12-volt fridge is a little bit over 10 cubic foot in terms of uh, total storage capacity. My preference, uh, I, I would like to hear now how you folks would like your Cougar, Bill, if you had the choice. I would like this with the 12-volt fridge the table and chairs, and the 400i uh, factory solar package. And I would be kind of curious, you know, would you like a booth or a table? Would you like a two-way or a 12-volt fridge? Would you like your solar to be 200, 400, or 600? Understanding uh, the higher up that solar chain you get, the more expensive it gets, especially when you crest that 600 mark. That's a big price jump. The 400 pound for pound, dollar for dollar, I think is just awesome. I think you're going to see us do a lot of that here at Bishes this year. Um, they uh, This floor plan also... You know, uh, all the Cougars have somewhat of a split decor. This floor plan, though, it really works for me because there's such a clarity and definition of, like, the, the kitchen or galley, as they say sometimes in marine or uh, old-school RV terms, versus the living area. So the two-tone thing doesn't really bother me here. 
Um, the uh, uh, RV also uh, has inverted prep outlets in several key areas. Like you may have noticed, um, I zoomed right in on them under the, uh, the the side wardrobe closets up in the bed area. You see some right over here in a perfect little appliance station. Um, the uh, the thing there is in the base solar flex that we're looking at the 200 watt solar package from cougar it does not have an inverter but it is prepped to those outlets if you wanted to add an inverter you don't need to go messing around with anything else now when you get to the 400 and the 600 package um you do pick up a factory inverter and a much larger one on the 600 package that can actually even crank the air conditioner for a limited time now have you noticed there are blackout roller shades through the entire rv as well um, the, uh, uh, idea there, you know, really giving you all the privacy you want, especially since this is kind of an open concept bedroom, uh, design. Now, a couple things here in the kitchen that are easy to miss under the overhead cabinets. They have, uh, some outlets run, which is, is very normal for laminated wall RVs. This is all pocket screwed cabinetry. You may have noticed that was a stainless sink and it does still surprise me. I love that they put that indirect accent light there above the kitchen. It does still surprise me that they have the open exposed screw heads like that they haven't dressed or pressed that up. It's like been two or three years now and it's the only area in this RV. It just feels a little bit unfinished, but I also feel like I could very easily hang something decorative up there and cover that up and that wouldn't bother me too much, but it's just a, a thing that I have noticed. Now, weaving our way over here uh, into the bathroom, uh, it is with that vaulted ceiling, very nice, very tall in here. Like, I have zero headroom issues at this. Part of the reason is because they put the shower head on the inside wall, like toward the kitchen area right there. So the shower head's at the tallest part of the vaulted ceiling, plus the skylight giving you room to back your head up without smashing your head on uh, anything here. Now, um, weaving our way around uh, a little bit, let me get you down here past the countertop line. Take a look at the space around that porcelain foot flush stool. When you do slide that bathroom door closed, the elbow room in this is not too bad. I wouldn't want it any smaller for someone my size, and if you are bigger than me, I could see it being a bit of a, a, a challenge point, certainly. There's also a blackout privacy shade for that uh, little window right there, and I Oops, kind of left the medicine cabinet kicked open a little bit. But taking a look at the right-hand side of the screen, giving you a look at the uh, the storage that's here in the bathroom, including the uh, nice little kind of like wastebasket space that we have right there below the sink area. That is an underappreciated, undervalued thing, kind of like we saw under the, the main bathroom, or main kitchen sink. <laughs> nope, nope, you don't want to be using the bathroom in the kitchen. Mom will, uh, mom will kill you, boys. <laughs> Now, flipping you around, giving you a view from, like, the shower as you were getting out, uh, probably in your birthday suit in all of your glory, unless you're showering with um, shorts on, and, you know, that would be weird. But uh, what I wanted to do here is also, as you see, close the slide to show you the road mode. And I figure by closing the slide out, it really helps demonstrate the fact that without ever touching the slide button, you can get all the way back to the bathroom, you can get to all the critical stuff in the kitchen, you know, like your sink, your refrigerator, all that stuff. You can walk your way right through this thing because, again, it has a little bit of that towable motorhome, that toter home kind of uh, feel and function to it. So as a result, this thing is basically just as good at a travel stop as it is your final destination. I think that's just like reason number 37. This is one of the best couples models out there today. And again, the moment we step outside, I just, I am very, very happy with the look of these. It has that kind of high class executive sort of fifth wheel color palette to me. But real quick, let's talk towing. Take a look at the, uh, the weights and measures of the RV over there on the left hand side of the screen. A uh, good place to also get a, a reminder of the holding tank capacities and stuff like that. Uh, with the size of this RV and with the general weight category of it, I do think it qualifies for the generalized descriptor of half ton towable. Now, that being said, there are still some half tons that are not appropriate for handling this. And depending on like, you know, if you're in very hilly mountain terrain, if you have wicked, crazy cross breeze wind country, you may prefer the extra strength and stability of a three quarter ton for hauling something like this, especially if you're a less experienced driver. Driver experience is one of those things people don't talk about enough when it comes to towing. It's not just what truck do you have and what engine does it have. Um, 
The uh, awning on this is maximized. If you notice, they couldn't have really put a bigger awning on that sucker right there. It goes uh, from the rear wall all the way up to that big uh, cargo baggage door right here. And speaking of that, notice how they're using slam latches on their big cargo doors, uh, as well as magnet holdbacks and a uh, you know sealed protected piano hinge. Now, giving you a look down inside there, you see that is uh, aluminum framed under the bed. Not only that, it is a large pass-through compartment, although it's not the same size baggage door on both sides because the water heater is located on the, uh, on the driver's side of this as well. But you see things in there like the in-command system, like a high-level uh, high level fifth wheel. Again, you're getting that stuff here on a travel trailer. Today, we're looking at the base uh, Solar Flex 200 package. Every single Keystone comes with at least the solar that we're looking at here. But even their most basic solar package still uses better Victron like charge controllers and stuff like that. This is a very good package. It's, it's not the biggest, but the 200 watt panel is generally considered enough to mostly offset the, uh, the 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Where you camp and how you camp, that may vary, however. So always kind of keep that in mind as well. Now, something they do different on this that I can't show you is their hyper deck flooring. A lot of brands use Asdell, Keystone does not. But the Asdell using brands don't use composite flooring typically. Ironically, Cougar does. Uh, a lot of your uh, laminated uh, Keystone trailers do use a, a various uh, form of composite flooring called Hyperdeck. And it's been out now for like four or five years. Haven't had problems with it. Not developing soft spots. Seems to be getting the job done. Notice that uh, gas grill cooker hooker coming off the side right next to your steps. It's, it's hidden way under the skirt line right there, which is why I like to get down here and check this out. The other thing that you can't really see that you can't really appreciate from just looking at this is all the stuff they're doing with their heating and cooling package. So it begins with a, uh, a heated and enclosed underbelly. Then they use radiant barrier layering. Then they have thermostatic 12 volt tank heating pads on all of the holding tanks. Thermostatic means they kick in at about uh, 40 degrees. So basically it's about as close to a Ron Popeil set it and forget it as you can get in terms of tank heaters. Now. We're at like a weird angle here as I'm weaving between a couple trailers to get you this uh, broadside shot. But along with that, all of their heat runs, uh, like they have a dedicated forced air heat dump into the underbelly, but they also have dedicated forced air um, heat outlets onto every single uh, holding tank. So you're heating the underbelly and you are forced air heating each individual holding tank, which also has tank heaters. Then you also have that radiant barrier up the nose and across the roof. And one of the things Cougar does really well, a lot of people want to worry about the cold camp capability, but we end up sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons in the summertime. Cougars are one of the best hot climate campers available out there with a zero to 110 degree factory rated tested proven package. That is awesome. Now there was a period last year, you actually saw in one of my videos, we had a Cougar come in, no ladder, just because there was a ladder shortage. As you can see, that is done. They are coming uh, as a complete product now, which is excellent. They have a bumper and an accessory hitch on the back if you wanna add um, like a little generator tray or a bike rack or anything like that. They have backup uh, lighting in their taillights. And as long as we're looking at that ladder, let's take a peek up at the roof. Um, specifically the, uh, the air conditioner and the solar package. They're using a white AC shroud, which I think helps the air conditioner not have to fight the sun nearly as badly. The other thing there, there's something about like Cougar and Rockwood roofing. I've talked about this before. They're the most sturdy and stable underfoot with the least amount of bend and flex and deflection when, when a bigger person like me walks on them. I'm over, I'm probably about 205 right now. I need to lose some weight again. I've got my fatherly figure dad bod uh, bringing a little extra pain to this Cougar roof and it is up to the task. Now you saw that 200 watt solar package there. Even on the base uh, 200 uh, solar flex package that we're looking at, you could still um, add a second panel. I would probably personally go with the 400i package. I like the factory installed inverter and just the, it, it, it's so expandable if I wanted to go crazy with it. Now, I paused down here for a couple things. You see power stabilizer jacks. This Cougar's too small to accept auto leveling. This is one of, I think, only three floor plans that are standard power jacks, but even then it's still standard power jacks, no manual. And this is a single sewer outlet with just one stinky slinky hookup point.
Now, jumping around like the house of pain here, one of the things that was optional last year that is now standard are the Goodyear Endurance radials on all of your Cougars, even here in one of their smallest travel trailers. Um, they are pre-prepped for a tire pressure monitoring system. I would probably personally like to apply that to the RV. That's uh, just uh, my two cents. We've got uh, factory solar on the roof, but you're still side solar prepped. And then right here, you see you got this little docking station. Now that's not the be all end all of docking stations, but it does give you a way to have like your cable and your satellite stuff kind of hooked up and away from like the kids at the park. Um, as opposed to the kids in the hall, which is one of my favorite shows growing up. And again, that new tankless on-demand water heater right there. Uh, so that, you know, if somebody's cooking in the kitchen and using hot water while you're taking a shower, you don't end up taking a cold shower. It's like, if you look at it on paper, they only made two or three updates as compared to last year. But if you look at what they did, they are huge impact, high value updates. It's not just silly fluff stuff. You know, you could argue that the change to the exterior is just cosmetic and I don't know, I really like it. But like the tires, the water heater, um, they are just, they are just crushing it right now. We might be looking at a three-peat nerd preferred couples camper three years in a row. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait to see how the smoke clears once some other things roll in, but wow, guys. Now, as I've said, my personal preference, I personally like the Cougar version of this floor plan better than any other ones that I've seen. I will also say, I've never seen a version of this floor plan that I don't like. And in case you're kind of curious as to who else builds it, I have links to like four or five other builders who have a floor plan very, very similar to this out there, like Imagine and Jay Feather, uh, some Coachman stuff, uh, all kinds of different brands out there. Maybe you prefer a queen bed. Maybe you don't need all the, the heavyweight features of this Cougar. Maybe you want something that's a little simpler, a little lighter, a little easier on the price tag. Because this is probably the most expensive version of this floor plan, which is unusual for me. Normally I prefer things very simple, but this one's, man, it gets my goat. It gets my goat every day. It totes my goats. <laughs> Thank you folks very much for tuning in. I'll leave you links in the video description where you can see where we have one of these parked at our various locations and how much we're asking. Um, keep in mind though, when this video first comes out, um, there's this is an ultra popular model. We spend a lot of time sold out. So if you don't see anything on our website listing one of these, call our team, we'll get you some figures, no problem. Or if you want one built different than this, you want the table, you want different solar, you want something else like that, let us know. We'll get you a quote on something. We'll get one built for you. We'll make it happen. When you're ready, we're ready. Thank you again for tuning in. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.